In today's video, we're going to take the FW Fisher Transformer Study. This is a free indicator that's built inside of Thinkorswim, and we're going to build three different scans for it. Now, this video is going to assume that you already know how to use this indicator or you already use it in your trading. If you don't, then I would suggest adding it onto your charts first, playing around with it. The overall premise is running this calculation called the Fisher Transform Equation on st different stochastics to try and find changing points in trend. So the arrows here are really what make that visually apparent with the magenta arrow having the greatest weight and the smaller arrows having less weight uh, in terms of trying to find these changes in trend. So in today's video, we're going to take this indicator and we're going to try and build some scans for common ideas that I think people are looking for. One is going to be just scanning for the magenta arrow, so that's only the purple arrow. That should help with giving a nice fundamental uh, breakdown of, well, how does the code work? What are all of the different variables? How can I change this to be, instead of the magenta arrow, the green arrow? You should have a good working knowledge after the first scan. Now in the second scan, what we're going to do is take that one step further and try and layer on multiple arrows here. So example would be something like this, where you have the magenta and the green. Another example would be right here. Uh, you get the idea. The overall premise is we have greater weightage on this signal, thus the stacked arrows. Now in the third scan, we're going to introduce in the component of trend, and we can do so using a few different methods. One is a very easy method, and that's just stacked EMAs. So we'd be looking at, say, uh, bullish stacked arrows in a scenario in which we have stacked EMAs on whatever time frame. So that's going to be one example scan. And for those like myself who prefer using something like the market pulse to understand trend, I'll also talk about how you can do that as well, where you may be looking at something like a green market pulse line along with a bullish arrow to try and find your bullish uh, setups. So with that, let's get started with writing the first scan for our magenta arrow. Now for the magenta arrow first, I think it's helpful if we come inside of our indicators page, and this is the study name again, FW underscore Fisher Transformer, and if we double click that, the panel that comes up will give us an idea of all of the different plots that we have inside of this indicator. Now the plots are what you'll actually see. So for example, the line is considered a plot. What you'll see here, the FT, the Fisher transform line, is the blue cyan line. Uh, you'll also notice there's signals here which have a U and a D at the end of them. The U variable represents all of the up arrows and the D variable represents all of the down arrows. And finally, you should also notice two numbers uh, with the multiplication sign in between. That represents the two different stochastics that are being used to try and really produce that arrow. So as an example here, the arrow that I think most folks care about, the magenta arrow. That's using the stochastic of the 17 period and the five period, applying the Fisher transform, and the plot there, the variable that is actually plotting this magenta, which we would need to reference in a scan, is FS17, so that's Fisher17, so 17 period, times 5, and then we'd like to scan, let's say, for the bullish setup, so we'll use U on the uh, end of that instead of a D. If we wanted to scan for bearish setups, we would change that to FS17 times 5D, which you'll notice is another variable right here, FS17 times 5D. Here we have uh, bearish arrows, again, plotting with the same magenta color. Now, similarly here, uh, the 5 period and the 3 period are the yellow to whitish color arrows. The 8 and the 5 period are the green arrows. We've already covered the 17 and the 5, and those are the different arrows that you'll see plotting on your charts. Now, you'll also notice there's two other variables, FTU and FTD, and this is using the default Fisher transform equation, and that's going to be the sign arrows. Now, usually the sign ones are the least important, so let's say you did want to start to clean this up just a little bit. You could come right inside of the Fisher transform U, so for the up arrow, turn off show plot, come into the FTD variable and repeat the same thing as well. And then if you'd like to get rid of the lines as well, the cyan line, simply turn off show plot there. And now for all the Fisher transform variables, the cyan variables, you said, hey, don't show me the plot. You can also save this as a default uh, setting right up here, save as default. So you don't have to keep repeating that same process over and over again. So now if I click OK here, click Apply, what you should see is our charts look a bit cleaner, uh, there's less noise. Now let's start to build a scan for just the magenta arrow first. Now you should have an idea of how we can do that based off of the variable names, but FS17 times 5 is the variable that we're going to care about. And in fact, if you click this code icon, while the code is protected, you could come in here and 
uh, just highlight over the actual variable name, which allows you to scan for it a little easier. So now we can cancel out of this. Let's come inside of our scan tab right here. Let me rem <clears throat> actually, we can just overwrite this scan. But if you don't already have a filter there, we can close this out, add filter, choose study. And then inside of study, we're going to scroll down, select custom, uh, and then inside of custom, navigate to ThingScript editor. Now here, we can go ahead and paste in our signal that we're looking for, which is plot, let's say signal is equal to FW Fisher transformer. We close out the parentheses to let the studies panel know that this is a study that's built in. We can add the period to know that this is a plot, and then we can add the semicolon to close out the scan. And that's pretty much it. It's a one-line scan to scan for the magenta arrows. So now if I click OK, let's go ahead and run this. This is running inside of the S&P 500 right now. Let's click Scan. OK, so we have 32 results inside of this scan. Let's go ahead and use dominoes as an example. So once we navigate to the chart of dominoes, we should see a magenta arrow. Let's see if that's true. So DPZ. The most current bar, we do have the magenta arrow printing as we would expect. And so that's the first portion of the scan. It's looking for just these magenta arrows. Now, the second portion that we said is we'd like to try and introduce this notion of stacked arrows. And so there we have a few different choices that the stack could be, knowing that the magenta is the one constant we'd like. We have the five by three along with the eight by five. And so those are two variables that we can add inside of an or bracket. So I come right back inside of the scan tab. I can copy paste this, and we're going to need to create this as a separate scan filter. If you try and combine uh, another filter right here, so as an example, if we did something like and, and we repeated this, but with the 8x5, right? So we do something like fs 8x5, what you'll notice is right down here below, we're getting a complex uh, exception uh, error, which essentially tells us that we need to break this apart into smaller queries that the scan tab can recognize. So this is why we need to split this up inside of two different scan quotes. So let's go ahead and do just that. So I'll copy paste this and we can close this back out. So this is our first uh, scan filter that we're going to apply for, which is the magenta arrow. We've already tested that. Now let's go ahead and click add filter, add another study filter. Scroll down, select custom, and here we can paste in uh, this filter and we can say again plot signal is equal to uh, this variable, this time the 8 by 5. Now if we click OK here, and now we run the scan for this, let's see what we get. And as we would expect, we still see DPZ on our list, but we were able to narrow down that previous list of 32, which had just the magenta down to 11, which has the magenta and the green arrow. So now you have an idea of how you can go ahead and create multiple scan filters using that same one line of code, but for whatever color combination you may be looking for. You can also start to do things like add a condition group. So we may say something like any of the following here. And here, for example, if we wanted to instead uh, have uh, a magenta arrow along with either this green arrow or let's say the other arrow that we have as well, which I believe is the uh, white yellow one, which is a five by three. So we can come right back in. We'll add in one other filter as well here. Custom study, paste this in one more time. And this time we're going to go for the five by three up arrows. And again, if you'd like to make this bearish, all you need to do is change the U to a D for the down arrows. Now we click OK here. We can remove our previous condition, searching for the 8 by 5. And now we've essentially built two different uh, scan conditions here. One is we're looking for places in which we definitely have a magenta arrow. And the second scan criteria is looking for places in which we have either uh, a green arrow or that off-white arrow in conjunction with a magenta arrow. And so that's the way we can uh, work around the complex uh, exception limitation that Thinkorswim throws at us. Now, the final state that we said we would discuss is stack DMAs along with the market pulse. Now, that's going to go in all of the following, not any of the following. And so let's go ahead and add that inside of all following. So we can say add a study here, click custom, and let's start with the EMAs ones, which uh, we've done this many times, but the code for writing EMAs, let's go through it one more time. So we can say plot, or actually, excuse me, def EMA 8 is equal to exponential average close 8. And that's how we've defined the 8 period EMA. We can now repeat this for the 21 period EMA as well. 
Uh, and then we can repeat this one more time for the 34 and then create our own version of a stacked or no stacked variable. So in this case, our stacked variable is what we'd like to actually scan for. So we'll say plot stacked is equal to EMA8 is greater than EMA21 and EMA21 is greater than EMA34. And so just like that, we have the code for stacked moving averages using the 82134. So let's go ahead and apply this one more time. We currently have 11 on our criteria that are meeting this. Let's run the scan. Now that 11 has dropped down to 5. And so just like that, you notice how we started with the initial 32, which were just the magenta arrows. We went down from 32 to 11 when we overlaid uh, a stacking of the arrows. And now finally, we've come down to just 5 once we've added in some sort of directionality. Now, for those of you that would like to use the Marky Pulse instead of uh, the EMAs here, let's come right back inside of our charts code. You will need the Market Pulse code, but that's free. And all you need is the part all the way up to the VMAs. So you can go ahead and copy paste this uh, and actually copy down all the way to the add label just so we can use this when defining what the condition is that we'd like to scan for. So come right back inside of our scan tab here. We can edit our condition for the trend uh, and I'll comment out what we currently have here. Uh, and then we can paste in the Market Pulse code right here. Now we'll have some errors. Let's go ahead and just fix this up a bit. Um, don't really care about the inputs right now. The VMA line, which is the actual market pulse line, we need to change to a def. And then what we're going to scan for is bullish right here. And so we can say plot bullish, and that's what we're looking to actually scan for. And if we'd like the close to be greater than our variable moving average, so we're in a stage of acceleration, we can add that in as a condition as well. So we can say, plot bullish and then add in one other condition here which is and close is greater than or equal to the VMA line. So that then essentially gives us the same condition that we have inside of here. Bullish and close is greater than or equal to VMA. We have bullish, we have the bullish conditions that we're already in and we have the close is greater than or equal to VMA. So now I can comment out the add label code. This works without any errors. Let's go ahead and run this scan one more time. And this time we have just four results. So let's go ahead and choose one to see if this condition is actually true. Let's use Philip Morris. So if we come inside of our chart here, we navigate to Philip Morris. What we should see is some form of stacked arrows, which we see right here. We should see a green market pulse, which we see right here. And these are the conditions that we're scanning for. So we know that this is working the way we would expect. Now, in case you'd like to scan for places in which this stacked arrow condition is true, but happening below this negative 1.2 line, well, that's a pretty easy change that you can make. Come right back inside of the scan tab. I've already made it in testing this out. But when you come to the uh, magenta arrow code, you can say FW Fisher, all the code that we had, and add in is a less than or equal to negative 1.2, which is now saying, hey, not only do we have this magenta arrow, but is it less than negative 1.2? You can add in the same condition if you'd like inside of the other arrows as well. So for example here, come right back inside of this Think Script Editor, add less than or equal to negative 1.2, and then the same thing as well for our second uh, arrow set. Click OK. And then now if I run this scan, what you should find is we have fewer results. This time we have seven results. Let's use uh, Domino's one more time as an example, or even Kraft Heinz. So if we come in, let's say Domino's first, we have stacked arrows in which this is happening below the negative 1.2 line. So that's working the way we would expect. The other stock that we had was Kraft Heinz. Same thing, stacked arrows happening below the negative 1.2 line. So hopefully this tutorial helps to give you an idea of how the inner workings of this indicator work, how you can reference different variables to build your own scans, how to work around the complexity exception error that the, uh, the scan tab may throw at you when trying to build a scan for the Fisher transformer. Now again, if you're looking to make this bearish, the whole idea is to reverse this, change the use to a D, and then in this case, the negative 1.2 would change to a positive 1.2 looking for uh, arrows that are stacked above. All right, I hope this tutorial was helpful. Uh, for those of you that would like to download the scans, they are available on our website. I'll go ahead and build both the bullish and the bearish scans as well, so you have them at your disposal using the three different scans that we said we would build. All right, hope this video helps. Take care, everyone. Good luck trading, and we'll see you in the next update.